Hi there. I'm going to talk about um, what a population regression function is in this video. So a population regression function um, is basically what I, well, is in fact what I've called um, the process or population process previously. So the idea is here that there is some relationship between wages and the number of years of education for individuals within our population. Um, so we might be able to sort of plot these points in two dimensional space or where the sort of axes represent number of years of education and wage rate. And we might think about there as being some positive relationship between these two variables. Although you might like to think that when the number of years of education increases, there might be a sort of wider spread of individuals about uh, for that given number of years of education and then from that we could draw a line or we could use some sort of function to derive a line of best fit which represents the average individual within our population. So looking at this population process we can see that wages isn't exactly determined by the number of years of education. There is in fact a whole host of other factors um, which we might think are idiosyncratic or they're sort of unsystematic which also affect the wages which an individual obtains. So there's some sort of deviation of individuals from this line of best fit which we call an error or we call it the disturbance term which represents all of these underlying factors which aren't accounted for in our population process. So to give an example of what this might mean well let's say that there's an individual one and they have 15 years of education and they become an investment banker. So perhaps an investment banker gets paid five thousand dollars a week yeah, this is a very wealthy, uh, very sort of senior investment banker. So that might be represented by this point here. Um, another person who also has 15 years of education, we might say they have their interest doesn't really lie with money. Perhaps they are more interested in social issues. So they have gone and they have gone and joined the government. And they work as an economic advisor to the government. And being an economic advisor, you're not paid so much. So maybe you're only paid, uh, perhaps not not five hundred, but perhaps you're paid five a thousand dollars a week. So that might represent this person down here, who, given that he has fifteen years of education, is below the average. But note that in both of these cases, it was sort of the idiosyncratic individual choices which led them to be above or below the average regression line. So those are the sort of things which are contained in our error process UI. So we can think about our errors as being distributed about the line or the way in which there is a sort of an average relationship between education and wages in our population is such that more of our points uh, or more of our individuals lie closer to the line than lie further away. I could have said that these points were distributed normally, but I, I don't actually need to make such a, a, a restrictive assumption. I'm just going to assume that there is some sort of distribution of the points around the line such that there are more individuals which are closer to the line than there are further away. And this is what we mean by the distribution of UI. And, and that's what these sort of yellow marks on our regression line or, or, or yellow frequency um, distributions indicate on our regression diagram. And by that we mean that there is some sort of underlying distribution of UI. And we might assume that UI are independent, identically distributed, about a, with a mean of zero and a variance or a constant variance. And this is the sort of expectation, or this is the distribution rather, of a UI given XI. So what do these mean? Well, I means that they are um, in, 
independent. So that means that knowing one error doesn't help me predict another error. And it identically distributed just means that they're all drawn from the same distribution. They're, they're all drawn from the same sort of underlying process. I've said that they've got a mean of zero, which means that whatever the value of education, they we expect this term to have uh, a zero value. And we said that it's got a constant variance, which I'm representing by sigma squared, which means that as I increase the number of years of education, there is not a sort of widening of the spread of these points uh, about the line. Uh, even though that might be the case in reality, we're just going to assume that that's the case to begin with. So that represents the, so this is a way of describing the distribution of these error terms uh, about the actual population regression line. And um, this population regression line, we can represent by taking expectations. So if we take the expectation of wages given a level of education, that means that we're going to get alpha s plus beta s times the number of years of education. Because on expectation, this error term actually has a mean of zero. So if we sort of were to imagine on average, we would get this line here. So in this video, I've just described what the population regression function is. We are then in future videos going to talk about some of the assumptions about the population regression function and how that affects the way in which we could form inferences about the population, given that we only have a sample.